Hey everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial in which we are going to be painting orange armor on a space marine. But you can apply this to any armor you like. So this one was suggested by one of my followers on Instagram by the name of Chase Tosh. So thanks so much for the suggestion. I felt this was a good one as it's not a very common armor color, particularly among space marines. So I thought it'd be a good one to tackle. As you can see, I had already painted the left leg just to test out the recipes and give you an idea of what the finished result will look like while I'm painting the other leg. This was actually requested for a tabletop project, so I'm going to show a simple approach for this, but then I'll also show how I pushed it a bit further to include the weathering. I started with a grey primer, which was the Badger Airbrush Primer, but I would also recommend Grey Sear or Wraithbone or even White Scar spray paint. I haven't used an airbrush at all for this tutorial in the interest of trying to make it a bit more beginner friendly, though of course you could use one for the base coats if you wish. Beginning with the base coat, I started with an equal mix of Jacaro Orange and Magma Droth Flame, which is a contrast paint. So we're basically using the Magma Droth Flame here to boost the saturation of the orange, so it's kind of acting like an ink. The Jacaro being a base paint is going to help with coverage and the mix together is a perfect consistency for applying it straight to the model. No further dilution is needed. Jacaro Orange on its own would be a bit dull, and we want something a bit more vibrant here, so this is a really nice mix. There's no real need to be particularly neat at this stage, as we're applying this in a similar way to a contrast paint, if you were kind of applying it straight out of the pot. I used a hairdryer to help speed up the drying, and this is the result after one coat. As you can see, it is a little bit patchy, so we're going to apply a couple more coats, or at least until we get a nice clean base coat. You may have noticed that I'm also using quite a large brush. It's a Rosemary Co. Series 99 size 3, which has got a really nice belly on it, uh, so it holds a lot of paint, and it does come to quite a decent tip. Uh, this one has been used quite a lot, so it has lost a bit of its sharpness. I use this brand of brushes almost exclusively, and I recently became an affiliate of Rosemary & Co. So if you're interested in picking up some really good, affordable brushes, and you'd like to help support my work, then please consider checking out the link in the description below. It doesn't cost you any extra, I'll just get a small commission from any brushes purchased through the link. Or if you use my affiliate code, Fenrir Brush at the checkout. And just to be clear, the brushes that I'm using in this tutorial, I paid for myself. They weren't supplied by Rosemary & Co. in a promotional sense. With the base coat done, we're going to start adding some depth with some recess shading. For this, we're going to use Gore Grunter Fur from the Contrast range. I'm switching over to a size 1 of the Series 99 now, just to have a bit more control with my brush strokes. I've thinned the Gore Grunter a tiny bit just to let it flow a little bit better into the recesses. Start working around all those recesses, getting a nice fine tip on the brush and lining it into all those panel lines. Don't stress too much about making mistakes here, as you can always touch it up afterwards with a bit of the base colour. This probably is the most time consuming part of this process, so it does take a little bit of patience. However, I am a firm believer that practicing these things will quickly improve your brush control skills. Though if you are wanting to implement this recipe for a wider army project, I might suggest looking at an oil paint process for achieving this stage. And you may have noticed that I, I am still wearing my splint for my broken hand, so hopefully I'm doing an okay job for demonstrating this tutorial. I am getting a bit more accustomed to painting with it on, but it's still a bit awkward. But thankfully, I should be getting it off soon at the time of this recording, so I'm pretty excited about that. So with all of that done, we can go ahead and move on to the next stage, which is some highlighting. I've made a mix, which is a 50-50 of Fire Dragon Bright plus the base mix. I always find it's a good idea to mix a bit of the base coat into the first stage of highlighting as it sort of creates a bit of a blend. It tricks the eye into creating a bit of a bridge between the base coat tone and the sharper highlights later on, to avoid those later stages looking too stark in contrast. I've worked this around every edge on the leg, but you don't necessarily have to do this. If you're wanting to paint an army of these guys, you might not want to do the highlights absolutely all around the model. You can just kind of hit the more noticeable edges. And with these highlights, you can go a little bit thicker than the final highlights will be as we want some of this stage showing through later on. And of course, if you make any mistakes here, don't stress, you can always turn it into weathering later. Sometimes the mistakes end up looking like more natural scratches or chips anyway. They're like happy little accidents. The next stage of highlighting is the logical progression of going for pure fire dragon bright. So with this we're refining the highlights and adding a bit of sharpness to the edge. And remember to let some of the previous highlight stage showing through. As I said earlier, do as little or as much highlighting as you wish. You don't have to work around every single edge, that's just the way that I like to paint.
So now that this stage is done, you could totally leave it at that if you're working on an army and you've got to paint quite a few models. But if you want to push it a bit further, we're going to add another highlight stage, which might be good for just characters in your army to help them stand out a bit. For this final highlight, we've gone with an equal mix of Fire Dragon Bright and Screaming Skull. Notice we're keeping some consistency in the hue of the highlights and using Fire Dragon Bright or FDB as I'm going to dub it because it's getting annoying saying it. <laughs> and we're just highlighting the brightness with a lighter tone being the Screaming Skull. This is applied very minimally to the prominent edges, the ones that will catch the most light on the corners and sharp points of the armor. I also like to play around with these highlights and sometimes we'll apply it in more of a broken line or sort of stippling action to give the impression of wear and tear. It's sort of a light chipping effect. So after applying that you can see that it just makes the armor look a little bit brighter and sharper. Again you could leave it at this stage but I also wanted to show you how you can achieve a bit of simple weathering like I've done on the left leg. So we're going to start with grabbing that first highlight color and work our way through those highlight stages in order to build up a bit more of a realistic effect for the scratches. The first highlight was the FDB mixed with the base mix. As you can see, it's very subtle at this stage, but don't be tempted to make them really big or long scratches as they may tend to start looking a bit unrealistic. The next stage is the pure fire dragon bright and just like with the edge highlighting we're wanting to have some of the previous color showing through. Ideally you should be aiming for the bottom edge of the scratch as this will help to sell the 3D sort of look as you'll see in the later stages. At this stage you can also start to add some smaller, finer scratches across other parts of the surface just to simulate shallower scratches and chips. Next we're applying the FDB and Screaming Skull mix and applying very minimal amounts to the lower edges of the scratch. And finally, we're taking Saigor Brown Contrast, which is a nice, dark, rich brown, and forming a nice tip on the brush, we're going to apply this chipping to the top edge of the scratch. And you can see now that we're achieving that 3D look, it appears as a slightly deep scratch with that damaged paint at the bottom catching the light. As I've done on the left leg, you can also apply the Saigor Brown sparingly to some of the edges to represent finer chipping. It's sort of in a bit of a stippling kind of action. I try not to go too heavy with this stage as you can end up with a bit of a spotted effect which can look a bit goofy. Try to focus on the parts that you think will be receiving the most weathering. Around the foot's a good spot. You can imagine that would get quite a bit of chipping just through trudging through the battlefield and, I don't know, kicking orc skulls. And we are done. I hope you found that useful. Thanks so much, Chase, for the suggestion. I thought it was a good one and decided I would just get onto it and record it. I'm pretty open to suggestions from you guys, so if there's anything you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below. I can't promise that I'll be able to make every single suggestion into a tutorial, but I will do my best. Maybe I'll target the ones that I you know, think that I would be able to achieve and bring to you guys, but any suggestion is very welcome. If you have found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you've painted a model using this, please tag me on Instagram at Fenrir Miniatures and I'd love to share it with the community to show what you've achieved through it. And I will see you again next time. Bye.